previously on Retro Game On, I brought a Mega Drive controller back to life that was discovered within an illegal dump site in the Australian Outback. I go into more detail about the backstory in that video, but that, along with the Mega Drive and Game Gear, made their way to Chris from the YouTube channel 005 Gamer. He passed them over to me for a pint of Guinness, and here we are today. Let's see if we can bring this Game Gear back to life. First looks aren't encouraging, it appears to be full of red dirt. Years of facing the harsh realities of the Australian sun have also unstuck the screen's polarisation film. That's a first. Disassembly was quite easy, but I discovered later that a bunch of screw posts were broken. I'm unsure if that was my fault or not, they would have been quite brittle regardless. To put it bluntly, inside was pretty nuts. I've never seen anything like this. It would have taken years for this much dirt to enter the handheld and compact itself. My hope is that the clay-like dirt has preserved the components. You never know, it could have acted as an insulation layer to protect everything from extreme temperatures. A man can dream. I began by separating as much as I could. I can't get over the polarisation film. I imagine it would take years worth of UV to not only unstick it from the screen, but make it shrivel up and harden like that. I began with a four step cleaning process. I won't even consider attempting to turn the game gear on until after that and plenty of drying. To start, I'm going to wash everything with plain old tap water. This is going to act as a rinse more than anything. The hope is to remove as much of the Australian desert as possible. After several days of air drying, I gave everything a once over with distilled water. This should remove all the minerals and other inconsistencies you find in regular drinking water. Next, I did the same with distilled vinegar. The goal for this is to remove as much corrosion as possible, and there was plenty of that. Lastly, and most expensively, I let it soak in a bath of isopropyl alcohol. This should take care of everything else. Being dumped in the outback or not, every Game Gear needs its capacitors replaced. The ones they were manufactured with are trash. I found this recap kit by chance looking for something else. I can't remember when or why I bought it, but classic disclaimer anyway, I'm not affiliated with Retrofusion. I'm not even sure where I bought this. Probably eBay. I'm going to start with the separate power and sound boards. The power board has the only through hole capacitors in the whole system. Let's replace those first. I started by adding flux and reflowing the old lead based solder. This will make desoldering less painful as it mixes and melts more easily. Once that's done, it's time to bring out the Moo Moo gun and feed it some grass. Ah, so simple. I'm not sure how I managed without a desoldering station. The first cap I removed seemed fine, which doesn't matter since it's being replaced anyway, but its neighbour looks… troublesome. Well, that's why we're here. Out with the old, in with the new. Just make sure the replacement matches. The capacitance needs to be bang on, but the voltage can either be the same or higher. Replacing the cap is as easy as ensuring the polarisation is correct, plopping it in and adding fresh solder. After cutting off the excess legs, I did the same for the other two through hole capacitors, but forgot to film the finished piece. The soundboard is a bit trickier. All the caps are in rectangular plastic casings that are glued down. There are several methods to remove these. I find it's easiest to start by gently pulling the plastic casing until the glue gives way. But don't be too forceful, we don't want to rip the solder pads out. Next, I clipped the capacitor's legs with flush cutters to remove the bulk of the waste. I then reflowed the pads until the remains of the capacitor's legs stuck to the soldering iron. You can easily clean it off your soldering iron stip using something like this. It would be good practice to now use some braid and completely remove the solder before adding the fresh stuff for a cleaner look. For whatever reason, I chose not to. Laziness, I guess. It was a bit trickier to position the new cylindrical shaped caps, but try your best as they need to be as low profile as possible. And here is the finished result, which I did remember to film. There were five total, but this is just the warm up. It was now time to tackle the main board. This has the same type of capacitors as the soundboard, but there's way more. At least there is more space to work. It takes a while and never really looks that great, but if you're patient with the solder pads, this is a fairly simple and common repair. I think this is the third or fourth time I've done it. Okay, let's now have a look at the screen. The gunk you can see is the glue that held the polarisation film in place. We can remove it by using IPA, a spudger, a toothbrush, and all the time in the world that a Saturday afternoon can offer. I didn't get it all off, but enough for the first test. Okay, hold on to your respective butts. Hold on to your respective beers. We're about to do the first test. And I'm a bit nervous, but that's just the way it is. And to be honest, I'm not expecting anything. I don't expect this to work at all. If it did, it'd be amazing. So obviously we don't really have a working screen yet, but we do have an indicator light. So if 
I plug it in and the light comes on, that's going to be a win. Oh, is there a very small... Wait, I'm just going to turn off these overhead lights. I think there might be a very faint light coming out. Or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, as expected, nothing. Now let's unplug this before I burn down my house. Long story short, I don't think the cable from the power board was making a connection to the main board at all. So I gave it a second clean with vinegar. As it was drying, I hooked up the power supply from a known working Game Gear. Hey! Hey! Oh, 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 oh! I have to take a photo and show Chris. Okay, crazy fort. Let's plug it into the, uh... Jeez, make sure I don't short it out on anything. Let's plug it into the speaker. Okay, I've just plugged in the headphones because it'd be just it's just a little bit easier than plugging in the speaker. I've got a game inserted too. It's a game that will play audio. So a woody pop, so it plays audio as soon as it's as soon as it turns on. So it's a good game for testing. Don't explode on me now. Oh, I can hear noise coming through, but not music. Oh, I can hear it playing. It's really low, but it's playing. No idea if that's going to come through or not. This Game Gear bloody works. Okay, next step is I'll plug in my newly refurbished soundboard and see if I can get sound out of that. Exciting times. Okay, I'm hearing feedback. Whoa! Okay, I'm sure you can hear that. And the volume works. Main board seems to be fine. Sound board seems to be fine. Screen needs a bit of work. We'll get to that shortly. Just got to figure out why the power board's not powering. It's your one job. From here, I did some testing of the switch. It's hard to move, but it seems fine. I also tested the voltage going in. I couldn't get a clear reading at all. Okay, I'm not really sure what I've done. I think just the socket itself was maybe a little bit deformed. Like there's like a little, uh, probably can't see that, but there's like a little piece of metal in there that sort of bends back and forward, acts as the ground. So I've just sort of inserted it and reinserted it and pushed it in really hard and... Oh. <laughs> it was working a second ago. You bastard thing. Obviously it's like temperamental. Can't believe that. It was literally working 10 seconds ago. It was working 10 seconds ago and I unplugged it and set up the cameras to show you. And now it's not working. There we go. Oh. <laughs> well, I got it on camera at least. There we go. Working just as well as before. Um, I should probably plug in the headphones and see, uh, just make sure that this power circuit is able to power the audio circuit. Okay, I promise not to blow my ears off this time. Hearing feedback. Yeah. There we go. So it's only coming out mono, but I've had this happen on a previous Game Gear I was repairing. I think it just might be only mono, it's not stereo, so I think that's the reason why. I think, I think, I think. This is great. I'm not exactly sure why this has been so dicky, how it works. It seems to be working more and more. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm now just inserting it. It's sort of like woken it up. I don't know. 
but I'm treating that as a win. Now let's have a look at this screen. Let's see if we can get that going. If we can get everything stock on this working, that'd be amazing. The original polarization filters are write-offs, but they're quite cheap and plentiful to replace online. You can find them if you search for adhesive linear polarizing filters. This one is 18 by 18 centimeters and costs about $10 shipped. One is placed in front of the screen while the other is behind, so I cut it in half. I mucked around with them for a bit and started to see some pixels. I won't go into the theory of how these work, but they're quite common for small screens of this age. Just note that one needs to be rotated 90 degrees to see an image. We can't see anything yet. This is a classic case of there being an issue with the screen's ribbing cable. Some data makes it through, but most doesn't, as not all the pins on the cable are making a connection. This is not usually repairable, but you can get lucky with the following technique. Set your soldering iron to a low temperature, and run it up and down the contact points of the ribbon cable. This heats the points and might reconnect the cable, but sometimes they will be too far gone to repair. As time went on, however, I did start to see changes. Making progress, I got some coloured lines. Contrast wheel is working. It was difficult to film, but eventually I saw recognisable gameplay. This was a key moment in the repair because it shows the Game Gear is fully working, even if the screen's ribbon cable is damaged. If it was still a garbled image, it might indicate an issue of one of the ICs, so this was good to see. Eventually, I discovered it was this smaller ribbon cable that was causing the issue. I mucked around with it for a while, but didn't progress beyond the left third of the screen showing anything useful. Giving up on that, I decided to focus on cleaning up the remains of the case. There is still adhesive stuck on the front case for the lens, and on the lens itself. RPA saves the day again for both. I'm not really sure if I should be using it on the lens or not. You're definitely not supposed to use it on computer screens. This lens is a write-off anyway, as it's missing all the decals. Glass replacements are cheap and cheerful, so who cares? Let's see how far we can take it. With all the adhesive gone, I thought it might be nice to reduce some of the lighter scratches. I've used aluminium polish for this in previous projects. Sometimes it makes a difference. And it looks... okay. Well, okay considering its history anyway. Here is the Game Gear back together at last. A lot of the screw posts are snapped, and some of the screws are so rusty they stripped, but it's more or less back together. It's the best I can do without replacing any hardware. I believe that the screen is cooked beyond saving, however. The traces in the ribbon cables are delicate at the best of times, but years of baking in the desert would have done them no favours. Let me know if you think otherwise. I was planning to finish the cleaning of the screen and apply the polarizers, but there's really no point. I'll save the polarizers for a different project. I might replace the screen outright one day, but I don't have the budget for it currently. I'm desperately trying to save for a home deposit and a new car, so I'm living like a monk. Never say never, you might see that in a future video. If I do, I'll likely replace the lens too. But for now, I'm being too much of a tight ass. Otherwise, I consider this repair a success. We turned a handheld that was sun damaged and essentially full of clay into a project that could be completed with a new screen. This Game Gear has good bones. Stay tuned for part three, where we hopefully get the Mega Drive going. See you there.